AKC hunting tests allow dogs to prove they can do what they were bred for without having to compete with another dog. Although the standards are high, lack of competition provides a more relaxed atmosphere, similar to a day's hunt. The immense popularity of the hunting test program is well illustrated by happy dogs and happy owners. To keep hunting tests meaningful as well as enjoyable, they must be conducted and judged in a consistent manner according to the regulations. A good hunting test begins with the committee. If the committee is well organized and they have selected good grounds and good judges, you're going to hold a successful test. The hunting test committee needs at least five members. A majority of them must be available on test day at all times. The hunting test secretary may be on the committee, but may not share it. The test secretary has a lot of work to do. Remember, the application for the approval of the event must be sent to the AKC well in advance, at least four months, so that the dates can be published early for maximum exposure. Another major responsibility of the secretary is getting the paperwork to the AKC within seven days from the end of the event. This will enable the AKC to record qualifying scores in a timely manner. The time to do this is while it's still fresh in your mind. One important function of the hunting test committee is to deal with any misconduct incidents that may take place at the event. We hope there aren't any, but if they do occur, the committee must be prepared to handle them. Well, we're not going to go into detail about misconduct on this tape uh, because there is a tape that deals specifically with misconduct. There is also a little handbook that should be in every committee member's back pocket during the test. It is imperative that all incidents reported to the committee by judges, participants, gallery, and workers be investigated and a determination made as to the appropriate procedure to follow in each specific case. Committees are also responsible for reporting any unusual occurrences. Misconduct does not necessarily have anything to do with rule violations. However, anyone can be guilty of misconduct, including judges. While we've given you a brief look at some kinds of misconduct, we want to be sure you understand that this is serious business all incidents should be reported to the committee. One good test for misconduct in connection with any kind of scene or altercation occurring during the progress of a hunting test is whether a family attending their first hunting test would be likely to decide after witnessing such an incident that the sport is not for them. Know the difference between a rule violation and misconduct. This is a rule violation running an ineligible dog or judging a dog owned or handled by a member of the judge's family or household. This is misconduct. If we pick the right committee members and judges, our chances of having any problems of misconduct are reduced. Judges need to have extensive backgrounds in training and handling pointing breeds. Hunting experience is invaluable and attitude is very important. They must understand that the hunting test program is absolutely non-competitive. In addition to evaluating the dog's performances, judges have a responsibility to report misconduct to the committee. They should report any abusive language, any refusals to follow directions, and any requests for favoring a specific dog. During the test itself, the judges control everything that goes on in front of them. The handlers and the gunners are both under the judge's control. Every successful sport has its officials in control of the event at all times. That control should be established right away. If it isn't, you may be asking for trouble. Gun safety is another important element of hunting tests that cannot be overemphasized. Guns are capable of inflicting serious injury and even death. The first consideration in gun safety is getting experienced gunners that have been given proper instruction. Everyone involved in the execution of the test should wear an article of clothing, blaze orange in color. The AKC recommends only double-barreled breaking shotguns of at least 20 gauge be used by the official guns, and only blank pistols may be used by the handlers. A blank pistol 
is incapable of firing a live cartridge. Semi-automatic shotguns cannot be used. Look what can happen with blank shots. Even the side discharge from a blank pistol has the power to injure. The care and handling of the birds is another important element. Keep the birds in a cool place with an available supply of water. Their well-being can be the difference between a poor and a great test experience. Also, use strong, healthy birds. The planting of the birds should be done by experienced bird planters. A club would be wise to have their best teach the rest. Always wear gloves and keep the birds away from your body. Dizzying the birds will prevent runaways and flyaways. Throwing the birds backward into the cover on the back course will ensure good holding birds that will also flush properly at the right time. Disposal of the shot game is also important. Don't just throw the birds in a pile. At the least, it's a disgusting sight. Have someone in the club assigned to remove, in bags or other containers, all birds when they are no longer needed. If the birds are to be eaten, they should be cleaned and kept cool. While we are talking animals, let's not forget the horses. In the hunting tests, only the judges, a judge's marshal, and a bird planter may ride horses. Be sure there is plenty of available water and food for them also. Now, if we are organized and we have our committee, our judges, our marshals, our bird planters, our gunners, and all of the details covered, we can start the test. Remember, preparation and control. We are ready to talk about the junior dogs. As the entry level of the hunting test, the junior dogs run for a minimum of 15 minutes. They must indicate a strong desire to hunt and run a useful, intelligent pattern. That means exactly what it says. A dog running in a tight pattern with no apparent interest in the cover isn't doing its job, and it probably won't find game which it must do to pass the test. We're looking for bold, independent hunts in meaningful cover. The dog must show reasonable obedience to the handler's commands, but need not be under control at all times. Natural ability is the basic quality being judged here. The junior dog must establish point and hold it until the handler is within reasonable gun range. The junior dog is not required to be steady the bird is flushed or flushes, the handler fires the blank pistol. The brace mate may be restrained or collared so as not to interfere with the point. A flash point is not counted as a point. This is described as a moment's hesitation before pushing the birds out. We want to see the juniors do more than just run the course. They must find game to pass. A dog should not be called back for bird work after it has failed to find birds on the course or in a bird field, except under very special circumstances. This might be knowledge that no birds were planted on the course, or they all ran out of the cover, or they were flushed by a brace mate cutting the course. This is a judge's decision that should not be made without good reason. The junior dog is graded on a score from one to 10 in four categories, hunting ability, bird finding ability, pointing, and train ability. It must have an average of no less than 7.0 to pass, and no single category can be graded less than 5.0 to produce a qualifying score. For example, if the dog didn't find a bird, a zero goes on the scorecard, and we have a score under 5.0. A dog may perform well on the first three categories, but is totally out of control. Keep in mind the basic underlying question, would I want to hunt with this dog? Probably not. Nor would I enjoy a dog that runs at long range and flushes a lot of birds without a point, but points on occasion. All right, we're in the field now with a brace of junior dogs, a Brittany and a German shorthair at the breakaway. Looks like the Brittany is trailing the short hair a little bit, uh, not quite to the point of interference. Or if it continues at all, the judges will probably have to separate these two dogs. Still no interference while well, they're separating themselves now. Short hair heading up to the woods to some very likely cover, places where they're 
Definitely should be birds. Sticking up in a tree line, looking for birds. Both dogs hunting very boldly now, pursuing the cover very nicely at a nice range for junior dogs. Brittany very animated, so is the short, short hair. Oh, that Brittany's trailing the short hair again. We see this often in young dogs. Hopefully they break themselves of that habit. Short hair's up in the woods now, looking again for birds. Brittany now moving to very heavy cover. Good, bold attacks in these cover spots. Brittany coming around on point. The Brittany now has a point. Very nice, solid lock there for a young dog. Ambler comes up. Flushes that bird, fires the blank pistol. Excellent work. Now, let's discuss what's expected of the senior hunting dog. The senior dog runs for 30 minutes on the course. Here's a senior on the breakaway. The senior dog is graded on two additional skills, retrieving and honoring and it will be graded more stringently in the other categories than the junior dog. Also, the senior dog must be steady to wing after it points its game, but may move or break on a shot. The dog must also retrieve all shot birds, but not necessarily to hand in order to receive a qualifying score. Let's look at the sequence. There's the point. The bird is flushed. The dog remains steady. Gunner shoot and the dog is off after the downed bird. The dog returns with the bird to within a couple of paces of the handler. This is acceptable. However, the dog will be scored lower if the retrieve is not to hand, depending on other factors of the retrieve, such as promptness and the difficulty of the retrieve. The senior dog must demonstrate an ability to retrieve and must return all bird shot. The senior dog must also honor in order to receive a qualifying score and must honor every time the situation presents itself. The regulations state that the senior dog may be cautioned to honor. However, the dog must clearly acknowledge the other dog before any verbal command is given. Let's look at some wrongs and rights on this call. Okay, the dog is on point. Here comes the brace mate. The handler yells, whoa, whoa, way too early. All right, how about this one? A stolen point. A dog that steals its brace mate's point cannot receive a qualifying score. Now, look at this dog. There, see the acknowledgement. He actually needs no caution. That's good work. Let's make sure a dog is not penalized for a divided find. A divided find is when both dogs scent the bird and go on point at the same time. Sometimes the judges do not see the action take place and come upon two dogs pointing. Since they have no knowledge of exactly what happened, they should treat this as a divided find. The judge designates one of the dogs as the pointing dog and directs the other to be healed away and held or sent on until the bird work is over. Both dogs are given credit for a bird find. The dog removed from the situation is called back later for a retrieve, unless it finds another bird. Another aspect of the senior that distinguishes it from a junior is that it must stop on any wild flushes. The handler may give a command at the flush without getting a failing score. Obviously, no command is better. What are callbacks for retrieving and honoring? Both the senior and master dog must be given the opportunity to retrieve and honor if they would otherwise qualify. First, how can it happen that they had no opportunity? Well, in the case of the honor, if the brace mate did not find any game, there would have been no point and therefore no honor. Remember that the only dog out of this pair called back would be the one that needed the honor, assuming it passed in all other categories. Obviously, the dog that didn't find game cannot qualify. The retrieve callback is necessary when the gunners miss the flushed bird or are unable to shoot for safety reasons. Here, too, however, judges should only call back dogs whose scores and the other abilities would allow them to qualify. The retrieve callback is best done immediately after completion of the brace. 
but may be set up at completion of the level being judged. Plant another bird for the pointing dog and let him continue on. The brace mate may be restrained while this is happening. These are some of the main points to be considered in judging the senior hunters. Let's now move to the master hunter. Superb, consummate, perfection, truly finished. Those are the words and the phrases used to describe the master hunting dog. The master dog's hunting and bird handling abilities set it apart from the senior and junior dogs. The master dogs must point with style. Staunchness and intensity are the elements of style. Master hunters are steady to wing and shot. The dog that breaks cannot receive a qualifying score. We want to see a thoroughly finished dog. As the handler and his dog go through the course, the dog must be hunting for the hunter. Their teamwork should be evident. The dog should seek likely objectives. It should check frequently to see where the handler is, but not to seek directions or seesaw back and forth. Checking back to the handler should not adversely affect a score, unless it is excessive. The dog and handler should present a picture of smooth and flowing teamwork. Like the senior dog, the master dog must stop on wild, flushed birds. However, the master dog must do so without any commands. If it fails to stop or is given a command, the dog cannot qualify. The master dog must also honor whenever its bracemate comes upon game. That means every time. The honor must be through the entire sequence, from flush through the retrieve. However, the honoring dog may be sent on if the pointing dog takes too long or cannot make the retrieve. The dog may be called into the area of the point, but once in visual sight of this point, it must honor without command. After the dog has established the honor, the handler may quietly caution the honoring dog. This is quiet. Whoa. This is not. Whoa. As in the senior dogs, the masters must have an opportunity to honor. The judges should call back all dogs that have not had that opportunity and would otherwise qualify. The master dog must retrieve all shot birds to hand. The handler may not assist the dog by moving towards the dog. Repeated dropping of the bird will result in a lower score in retrieving. The opportunity to retrieve must be given to all master dogs if they would otherwise qualify. Dogs may be called back to retrieve, as we earlier demonstrated. All of the game delivered by master and senior dogs must be fit for human consumption. Severely damaged game results in a non-qualifying score. Judges should be sure to check the game and to observe the dogs as they return in order to differentiate between badly shot up birds and damage done by dogs. Judges should also be lenient with dogs that have difficulty returning birds that have been severely damaged by the shot. Before we look at some master dogs, we must take a look at a delayed chase. A delayed chase should detract from the score and trainability at the master level. What is a delayed chase? Well, here's an example. You have flushed a bird for your dog. The gunners miss the bird, and you send your dog in another direction, but the dog changes direction to chase the flushed bird. Now, let's go to the field and judge some master dogs. All right, these dogs have started out well from the break. They are ranging well out. Using the wind coming back, checking the likely spots. One dog is taking the tree line to the right. The other is working the other tree line. Now he's back in the center, checking some heavy cover there. These are good ranges for dogs at the master level, working very independently of each other. Still in that tree line, coming back in the center, checking the field. We like to see this dog on the left get closer to this tree line. He is. He's working up there very tightly now. Great animation, real bold coverage of the territory. Oh, this dog on the left has got a point. We have a point on the right also now. It 
looks as if this bird may have moved. We have here what we call a non-productive point. But this dog is now in position to honor the other dog on point, which, of course, he must do without help. And he does. He does do that. Now the gunner should move up to the handler. And if you were judging this, you would help position the gunners. Get them in good position for safe shots. Everything is correct at this point. Now the handler will flush the bird. Remember, only handlers flush birds. Gunners never flush birds. There it goes. The bird is in the air. The dog is steady. The handler sends the dog. He goes straight to the fall. Now he returns. We want to see him deliver this bird to hand, which it looks like he's going to do. Yes, he does. Now this dog and uh, the honoring dog uh, may be released to continue the hunt. Now we've covered some of the major requirements and how they should be interpreted. Judges should be knowledgeable of dog performances and understand and judge according to the regulations. It's your job as a participant to know how to play the game. The judges are there to evaluate your dog's performance, not to train your dog or teach you the regulations. Get yourself a copy of the AKC hunting test regulations for the pointing breeds. Write to the AKC for this and more information on the program. The titles are not easy to earn, but with a good dog and some effort, you can be successful. It's a great feeling when your dog takes home a qualifying ribbon. And when you can finally add those initials, J-H, S-H, or M-H after its name on the pedigree, it will be one of the biggest thrills in your lifetime of activities with your dog. The ribbon should serve as a reminder of all the fun you had achieving the titles with your dog. The following is a visual glossary, which might make it easier for you to define various behaviors in the hunting test for pointing breeds. Delayed chase. Running in the direction of flushed game after either pointing, honoring, or stopping to flush, instead of obeying the handler's cast, off into a different direction. Divided find. When both dogs scent the bird and go on point at the same time, usually occurs when they are not able to see each other until the point. Flash point. This is described as a moment's hesitation before pushing the birds out. Honor. When a dog stops immediately or within a few steps, usually in a pointing stance upon observing a brace mate on point. Pointing staunchness. The degree of intensity, loftiness, or elegance a dog demonstrates while pointing. Steady to shot, maintaining a point during the flight of a flushed bird and the shot, or shots. Steady to wing, maintaining a point during the flight of a flushed bird. Stolen point, a dog that steals a point makes continued movement into the area where the game is present after observing a dog on point, rather than honoring. Stop to flush, when a dog stops after observing the flush of a bird. Well, that was fun. We hope this presentation has been informative and has answered some of your questions about the AKC hunting test for pointing breeds.